All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Bio 415 at Grand Canyon University, um, also known as Vertebrate Zoology Lab. Um, my name is Dr. Clarkson, uh, Dr. O. Clarkson. Um, Ordovich is my middle name, so some of my colleagues as well as students will refer, refer to me as Dr. O, or you can refer to me as Dr. Clarkson as well. Either works just fine. So um, this presentation is only going to be a brief introductory lecture um, that kind of goes over an overview of some important terminology that we're going to be uh, familiar with over the course of the semester. Um, as well as some other uh, anatomical, anatomical orientations that you guys are going to have to also be familiar with. So just some terminology that we're going to be uh, using um, ad nauseum um, as we uh, proceed throughout all the courses in this class. <clears throat> so I have an image here in the background of a vertebral column. Now this is from a human being. Um, Vertebrates are going to be named after any organism that essentially has a quote unquote backbone or a spinal column. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a bone. Um, a lot of organisms that fit under the class of, of vertebrata are going to be organisms that are 100% cartilaginous. So cartilage is going to be the major component that provides structural integrity for a lot of these organisms. Uh, but just because they do have a uh, quote unquote backbone or vertebral column, um, they are going to fit under the class of vertebrates. Um, this is opposed to organisms that are invertebrates, organisms that do not have a backbone. Um, these organisms generally have an exoskeleton, so they fit under the class of arthropoda. So those are going to be mostly your arthropods and organisms like that. So vertebrates are going to be distinct from those classes of organisms. Hmm. Um, also, one thing that I want to mention before we go on is that um, this class, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of comparative um, comparative zoology. And by comparative, I mean we're going to be comparing the anatomical and physiological features of different organisms under vertebrata. Um, and we're going to see what's going to be the commonalities versus some of the differences. And fundamentally, we're going to be comparing a lot of these organisms structure to human anatomy as well. Now, I'm a medical doctor, so um, human anatomy and physiology is my background, that's my expertise. So of course, I'm going to bring in a little bit of my personal bias into this class. So I want you guys to know that as a caveat up front. Um, so a lot of our comparative zoology is going to be comparing the uh, skeletal structures with the skeletal structure of humans. That's going to be sort of a uh, kind of a point of reference for a lot of the comparative zoology that we're gonna be doing for the purpose of this course. Now, course overview, this chart sort of lays out a lot of the different dissections that we're gonna be doing throughout the semester. Um, unfortunately, I made a little error in this chart where it talks about terrestrial vertebrates down on topics five and six. Um, albeit pigeon as well as cats are terrestrial vertebrates. Um, topics five, six, and seven, uh, sorry, topic seven are going to encompass mammals, um, which involve cats as well as the sheep brain dissection. Um, but terrestrial vertebrates are going to involve uh, anything from reptiles and beyond. So I kind of, uh, I didn't necessarily organize the chart uh, according to topics, but go ahead and just pay attention to the lab topics. That's kind of how we're gonna be um, doing our labs throughout this semester. Um, <clears throat> I did include a uh, updated calendar for you guys to print. Um, that's gonna be found in your course announcement. So please print that. Um, that's going to be properly laid out um, with not only the dissections for each uh, um, topic, but also the due dates for assignments as well as the dates for our quizzes and the ultimate final exam. Um, you're also going to see um, different dates that are uh, associated with observed holidays at GCU. So for instance, the reason why I'm recording this video today is because um, this 
lecture was going to fall on a, an observed holiday, so we're not going to be meeting in person. Therefore, this lecture is going to be asynchronous. Now, in terms of lab safety for our class, uh, we are going to be dealing with animals that are preserved in uh, toxin, to potentially toxic chemicals. Um, so make sure that you wear your white coats. Uh, we're going to be using scalpels pretty often. And by pretty often, we're almost going to be using scalpels every single dissection. There's going to be a couple of exceptions when we use scissors instead. Sometimes scissors are going to be more um, optimal than using a scalpel blade. But regardless, we're going to be using sharp objects. So make sure that you wear closed toed shoes. Um, I would really not, I would like to not see any shorts. So make sure that you wear long pants. Um, so white coat, pants, closed toed shoes. Okay. Um, I would prefer for you guys not to be using any, any sort of electronic devices during the course of our labs. Um, there are going to be moments where I'm going to allow you to take photographs of your dissections, particularly if you guys do a very good job at a dissection. I do like to, you know, do do uh, photographic documentation of your work. Um, this can also be used as future study references uh, for the final exam. Um, we are going to be doing microscopy throughout this exam. So we're going to be looking at, um, you know, tissue samples underneath dissection microscopes. Sometimes it's fun to be able to take a photograph of whatever you dissected during that day. So um, I will permit you guys to use uh, recording devices every now and then, but it's going to be very limited and uh, with my permission only. Okay. Um, cool. Now, in terms of biology, this is a biology class. Um, this is an advanced biology class. So um, my one of my favorite meme pages on Instagram, Stonk Exchange, uh, this would be a very unsuitable definition of biology and anatomy, although I do find it pretty funny and amusing. And you do not spell biology that way either. But anyways, biology is going to be essentially the study of anything that's living, uh, bio, living, Augy, the study of. Um, and biology does also encompass physiology, uh, behavior as well, albeit this is not a behavioral uh, biology class, but we are going to be uh, examining the different physiological structures of different organisms. So we're going to be looking at organ anatomy. I want you guys to make sure, I want to make sure that you guys understand what the different organs do. So for instance, if we're talking about the liver in certain organisms, we're going to be talking about the metabolism of toxins or the filtering out of blood. Um, if we're talking about the spleen, we're going to be talking about the filtering out of um, uh uh, old blood cells for them to be recycled um, in the system. Um, neuroanatomy, obviously, we know what um, the neurological system does. It's going to be involved in a lot of higher cognitive function, as well as uh, musculoskeletal type movements. Um, yeah, so we're going to be studying a lot. It's not just going to be the gross dissection, but we're also going to look into what some of the anatomical features do um, on a, um, a specimen by specimen basis. And there's gonna be a lot of crossover between these different specimens that we're gonna be looking at. Speaking of specimens, let's kind of go back to this calendar. Uh, the specimens that we're gonna be dissecting are organized from lower order to higher order organisms. So we're gonna be starting with some of the more basic type of vertebrae. So the lamprey is gonna be the first dissection we do. The lamprey is entire, entirely a cartilaginous organism. Um, not really much going on in terms of its GI tract. It's pretty rudimentary and simple. Um, so we're going to start with the lamprey. Then we're going to start moving up and up. So lamprey is going to be an aquatic organism. Then we're going to start doing the, the uh, dogfish, aka shark. That's another cartilaginous organism. Then we're going to start getting into uh, the perch, um, which has a little bit more bony features. And then we're going to start getting into the mud puppy dissection. So amphibian, meaning that the organism spends part of its time um, in the water as well as on land. Then we're going to start getting into frog dissection. And then we're going to strictly get into the terrestrial organisms, reptiles, um, avian organisms, moving on up to the cat dissection. Now, the cat dissection, as you'll notice, is going to take place over a course of four weeks. The reason being is because the cat out of all these organisms that we're gonna be um, dissecting is much more sophisticated than all the uh, uh, prior organisms that we dissected. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of comparative zoology, uh, comparing cat anatomy to human anatomy because there is a lot of crossover. 
And then the very last uh, dissection we're doing is going to be very brief and easy. It's the sheep brain dissection. Um, we're just going to be doing a brief crash course on uh, neuroanatomy. So that is going to be fundamentally the breakdown of this class. Um, I'm going to post one more video that's going to talk about uh, more terminology uh, on, uh, sorry, more terminology for the purpose of our lab. So um, I'm going to post that second video in a moment here.